Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today I'm going to give you an update on the Chevy Volt battery pack, um, where that's gone, and how I've converted it into a 13S uh, 1P pack, 48 volt pack for the electric bike. Um, so I'm probably going to make a, another video uh, coming up on how the actual process is and how to actually do this, disassemble beyond the, like the regular nuts and bolts and stuff, but um, today I'm just going to go over a brief overview of the packs. Um, here's my old pack that I had made out of 91 uh, laptop cells. And as you see, I have the scale here. Uh, this one is... nine pounds, seven and a half ounces. And then the, uh, the new pack here is 10 pounds 15.3 ounces so almost 11 pounds so this one's about a pound and a half more but the capacity of this pack uh, theoretically should be about three times more power uh, these this one this pack here is made out of 91 18650s and a 13 s 7p configuration um, these batteries weren't very good. They were salvaged out of laptops. They were probably they were between uh, fifteen hundred milliamp hours and two thousand. Uh, this pack, from me charging it with my charger, I've calculated it to be about four hundred watt hours. Um, this pack here, I haven't been able to actually test it myself the whole pack because my boost converter, my Drock boost converter that I was using to charge before, uh, burned out when I tried to charge at 10 amps. Um, it worked for about three minutes and then it went poof. So I'm disassembling that to try to find out what, what broke so I can get the component replaced and go back to using this. I really like the, uh, the controls and how this thing works. It says it's rated for 15 amps, but I forgot to factor in the uh, one-third China factor, and 10 amps was, uh, even though it was in the specs, was too much for that thing to do a consistent load. So this pack here, I um, did some little bit of research. I think the cells are 45 amp hours each. So we're going from a 1.5 amp hour per cell times seven. So what is that, like around 10-ish? uh 10 inch amp hours to 45 so this i mean really four and a half times the amount of power i don't know if that's realistic i'm saying three times is probably more uh after i can actually test it i did ride the bike last night uh it feels like it has a little bit more power but it did not blow a 25 amp fuse i have the fuse here using the same 25 amp fuse that i was using on this one this pack will blow a 20, 20 amp fuse. Uh, I know this one will. These these are rated at from uh, from GM at like 7C, and 7 times 45 is like obvious. I mean, 7 times 45 is enough to blow a 20 amp fuse. We'll just put it like that. Um. So yeah, these are the this is the pack here. Let me move this out. So. So there's actually 13 bags here, 13 individual cells. Um, that's to get the 48 volt nominal battery for the uh, bike. I did replace the uh, speed controller with the 1500 watt one from China for like $30 on AliExpress. Uh, the old original one was up from 1000 watt. And the 15 mm definitely has more torque. The problem is it has a speed limiter at 23 miles an hour, and I do not know how to remove that. If you do know how to remove it, uh, leave a comment, please, and I will gladly turn this thing up to the moon. The old controller could go 31 miles an hour, uh, top speed, and this one has way more power. It should be able to go probably 40, if not more. And then with the range of this pack, which is dimensionally just barely bigger than this pack, um, it's like one inch on all dimensions, except for the thickness is about the same. Uh, with the three times more range, you, you could probably ride this thing for out, like 
hours. And uh, so, yeah, very long range, tens of miles probably. Um, even with this pack, you know, you could ride the bike for an hour, maybe maybe even two, depending on how hard you are on the throttle. And this, this pack is just literally make, almost made out of garbage. Um, I use, uh, if you're to make a pack, always make sure to put a fuse. Um, this, this is already the second fuse. When I was building the battery, I had a, a little bit of an accident, and uh, the fuse definitely saved me from blowing myself up. Um, always put a fuse on any battery that you make, because you will blow it. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, when you least expect it. So, as you can see, there's tabs on these batteries, and uh, they're all taped with electrical tape, and it's just all series. Let me try to bring this thing in. So, you can see they're all in series, plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus. Um, the plus has the fuse on it, and the minus goes here, and then I have an XT60 connector. These are awesome, you can buy them very cheap. Um, online and I put those on everything including the charger that I now use um, this is a 54.6 um, volt charger it has a little potentiometer in there that I've actually uh, turned down to 50 54.2 that's as low as it'll go because I don't actually want to charge the cells all the way up uh, I'm not running a DMS so I don't want to overcharge the cell and have it grenade on me and burn my house down I chopped off the barrel connector that was on the end and soldered on a XT60 uh, male. Always run the female connector on the battery side and the males on the on the motor and on the charger. Um, that's just from a safety standard kind of thing. If you look at your house, all the outlets are females because the source always has the female. It's kind of a standard. And then uh, how these work is the curve side on the XT60 is always the minus. There's actually on the side that's labeled. So just make sure you do all yours the same. Um, this charger can only charge at 4 amps. I haven't actually tested it, but it's probably less than that. Uh, it sucks because it takes forever to charge these big batteries. I would love to charge at 10 amps, which is well within the charging limits of this battery. This battery should be able to charge at 45 amps, if not more. Real conservatively, 35, 40 amps. But, uh, the power supply you need to uh, charge that is pretty expensive, so I'm pretty limited to uh, pretty low amp charging right now. Uh, I charge, set the voltage limit for 53.3 volts, which is 1.4 volts per cell, which uh, is lower than the maximum charge. You can charge these to 4.2 max, but I don't want to charge them all the way because, like I said, I'm not running a BMS, and uh, I don't want to risk the thing going uploading on me so uh, I did measure all the cells individual voltage while I was charging it and they were all within 0 0.04 volts of each other so that's very balanced uh, anyway these are electric vehicle grade cells they should be very very close to each other anyway because these are like the quality control is very good on these because they want them all to be the same so I don't think running this without a BMS is going to be a huge issue. Um, I ran this cobbled together garbage with no BMS for a while and basically on that one the, the individual cell voltages were kind of like all over the place as much as um, I don't remember specifically but they are pretty drastically different. Uh, so basically, whatever, the first one got to 4.2, that's whatever the voltage of the pack was going to be. Um, I didn't, I, you don't, you can't charge anyone over 4.2, otherwise it's going to be dangerous. So you basically limit the pack below its 100% charge because whatever the highest voltage is of the individual cell is where you're, where you're limited, unless you can balance it down. So I think I was charging this one at like 53.9 instead of the full 54.6, because that was where the first cell got to 4.2. Um, if you have any questions about building your own battery or um, e-bikes in general, uh, I've built, this is like I guess my second bike, it's the same, same frame, but really almost everything is different except for the hub motor, 
which I did actually have to replace the Hall Effect sensors in because I blew them up. The cable that goes from the ESC to the motor uh, rubbed on the tire and the 5 volts wires for the Hall Effect sensor shorted out to the 50 volt uh, motor control or maybe even higher than 50 volt uh, power wires. Blew up basically the controller. It didn't actually blow up but the controller doesn't work anymore and the Hall Effect sensors in the motor were, were totally shot too so I had to solder those. Uh, new ones. They're not very expensive. You can order them on I think I used Air Electronics because they have free next day shipping on everything uh, They don't pay me to say their name, but um, That's what I use you can also buy them on like Ma I think it's Moser Mauser or uh, DigiKey um, they, uh, they sell cheap electronics you can buy them from China too, but if you want to wait like two months um, They're not very expensive. I think they were like 50 cents a piece. They might have been a dollar a piece, so like three bucks to, to replace those. Um, so that's about it for this video. Uh, try to keep this thing not retarded. It's already 12 minutes. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I can fix this. This is like a $35 SMPS boost controller, boost converter, um, which I really like. I checked the caps and they're fine, so I think maybe this. Uh, this chip right here, which I don't know if it's a MOSFET or whatever, but I think this is bad. I'm not sure. My knowledge of electronics isn't uh, PhD level, so <laughs> we just uh, keep taking stuff off until I find where it's shorted out. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned and uh, check out my new shirt. There's only one of them, so I'm not actually selling them. <laughs> I'm just wearing it. Um, yeah. Uh, there'll be more videos in the future. I'm going. I'm planning on making a video where I actually just demonstrate how to actually take down the volt pack with a razor blade and all that. Soldering copper to aluminum with some chemical from Russia. Uh, I don't know what it is because it's all in Russian. And uh, there will be more on that. Probably a whole vid dedicated video, if not two, uh, about that coming up. So we'll see you on the next one.